The individual blessed with the task to speak to you is me, Lawrence Ordiase. I don't know why I saw it. Ew. Ew. Um, hi. My Billy Podcast. I want to do this actually sitting back for some reason. Because I'm tired. I'm tired today. My Billy My Billy Podcast. Lawrence Ordiase. A podcast focused on beating the hell out of your negative voice. <laughs> I always do that. I kind of like it. I'm going to keep doing it. Welcome back, though. Um, I'm tired because of this. I've sat up, sat back, and sit back. Now I'm sitting up and looking back. I'm just restless, I guess. I'm talking a lot, stuttering. I'm restless, but I'm rested. And I'm locked in now because I got kind of the pregame jitters out of the way. Sidebar, if you've done things over and over and over again, like a basketball player, like an athlete, preparing for the battle, preparing for the game like they do all the time, you still get jitters. And I do, too. For me, I have jitters because of this. I've been sick literally this whole past week. This whole past week, I've been bed rest. Shout out to mommy, my mom, because I literally laid in her bed all like the last couple of days and she's been bringing me stuff. She's been great. A great mom. And, you know, I had so much for this episode. I had a different vision for this episode, but because I was bed rest, I'm not as organized with my thought, my train of thought, my right notes my speech but i think that's life if you're going through anything in life there's going to be twists and turns and peaks and valleys and ways that you got to pivot and you never know you can birth something great even because of it as you said as i said clarity isn't the biggest thing on the agenda right now but i did want to talk and speak on just my thoughts and everything i've been going through because man with what we just did here at Texas Tech. I think I'd be remiss not to talk about that. And I'm actually traveling to Texas Tech here in about uh, two hours. That's kind of why I'm scrambling, kind of sweaty. If I lifted, if I was wearing white, literally you'd see (laughs) sweat stains. Anyways, let's get into it. I think, you know, for one, again, my mind bullies like, bro, you didn't even introduce this whole thing the right way. But me, part of me is like, should I redo it? One, two, go with what you know, go because this is you and it sets you apart from others, even though you're not competing with anybody. It's just you and people resonate with somebody just being them talking, sitting down, chatting. So this I'm coming. But to give you some further context for those that don't know me, don't know this situation, I was blessed to. I'm humbled to be a part of our committee to search for a new head coach at my university, Texas Tech. And, you know, to say I'm honored and humbled was, you know, I can't say that enough. You know, a former player being on the committee where it's a AD of the school, head football coach of the school, and one of our, the big, they got a damn, the damn basketball center is named after one of them. The donor of the school, those three big people, I think that's, and then me, I I think it's crazy. It's crazy. And I'm sitting there like, bro, huh? And, you know, I've done things at Texas Tech. Uh, I've been with teams. I've fought injuries, broke this foot, broke the next foot, literally went through a coaching change, fought, scrapped, grinded, led teams, been, I've done a lot, but. To get to this point and just, you know, the reverence and kind of the, you know, I guess the honor that I get from people, the fans, the community, and then, you know, the athletic department, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. So for me to be placed in a group of fire people, like I think was, that's awesome in itself. But, you know, going into it, when you're one of four, you're probably years, no offense to these guys, 20 plus years younger than any of these guys on this panel. It has you thinking like, wait, why am I actually here? Okay. You're a player. So what? Okay. Do they just need you as a little token? Here you go <laughs> to say that, oh, the fans, the, cause you, they, they know the fans, I guess, love me, whatever. So, oh, whatever decision that we choose, we got his approval. Here we go. And all these thoughts come to my head, but then I'm really like, Bro, it's not any of my business to think that way, one, because, again, if you're listening, if you're watching sidebar, thoughts come to you when things come to you. And some of us take and heed on to that thought. 
that you have no business thinking and grabbing onto. Thoughts come, but you have no business agreeing with it. You can say, uh, hell no, that's my mind bully talking. And this is me. This is an opportunity God gave me to shine, to serve others. And I took that. I took that route. And I was like, that's actually really cool because I did. But, you know, when things like this come up, I said yes to it. And I'm in these rooms and I'm preparing. And I'm just thinking like, God, what should I say? What do I do? How do I do the research enough to interview these candidates? Like, is it enough? I don't know what to do. And, you know, I was just at peace, just in the unknown. Because I say that because I've literally been preparing for this moment ever since I've had this podcast, the opportunity to talk to different guests from different backgrounds, to study even my cadence on how to interview somebody, to just read and write. And obviously I, you know, I have a passion for good leaders and I know what bad leaders look like. So I already have that mindset and the players aspect of what players need in a coach. And I've been on the pro side. So what, you know, these highly talented people, talented losers, I say, that are just talented, but never know how to win because they were never coached to win. I know what that looks like on the next level. So I did bring a lot to the table. So on that aspect, I'm like, oh, okay, I am needed here. Like my voice, my vision is actually very vital and essential to proving and getting a head coach that knows the vision that we have because we have a standard of excellence at tech that we set since the years, 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 not my years, the guys that built it up before me, like a, a Clark Lambert, like those type of guys that grinded, grinded, a Jay Crockett, a Todrick Gocher that built our program to build it up. That I, That's another thing for me. It's like, oh, I, I ramble a lot. And if you want to hear and you're only here for the tech stuff, skip, I'll talk about it later. But that's another thing. Like, I think a lot of us that want to leave an impact in somebody's life, we want to leave an impact. We want to leave an impact. But we're like, oh, it's just today's times. We just listen to what she said, what we say, what our friends say, but we never listen to the people that have actually done it. That doesn't make sense because if you want to leave an impact, <clears throat> you actually have to listen to those behind you that did it before you. Because think about it. Um, days pass. There's going to be more tomorrows. And when those people come, why the hell should they listen to you? Because you did it before them. If you want anybody to listen to you, you have to listen to those before you. So those after you can listen to you. That's impact. Anyways, so I'm thankful for the impact they left on our program. And I'm thankful for just, you know, the impact they left on my life. Anyways, I said this to say, I don't know. I was rambling a lot because that's a point. So many people in this generation, oh, they don't know. I'm not going to listen to my daddy, my uncle, my cousin, my, my coach, because they don't know. Today's different with TikTok. And, okay. <laughs> but you still want to leave an impact. We're going to do it like us. That's not how life works. They've done it in a different way. Their sphere was different, but it kind of all looks the same. <laughs> there's different, there's not so many ways to skin a cat. I don't know the same, but anyway, see, I took that from somebody. Anyways, I just think that, you know, that point of view being a player helped me see it different. And I was allowed and not allowed. I, because again, <laughs> People invite answers, not problems. And God chose me to be an answer to somebody else's problem. Our problem is we suck last year. Be an answer. The four individuals was the answer to solve the problem of we don't have a coach. God put me there. That's another thing. A lot of times like you get promoted. If you're listening, you get seen and cost. Again, my mind has been a long week. I'm tired, whatever. If it comes out wrong, I'm not editing. That's not me. A lot of times, like you get put into a position that's like, whoa, your life changed instantly or the way you're viewed or the way you're perceived is literally different. And a lot of times when you get there, you want to be a shell of yourself. Like, oh, I got a promotion. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be like no one else. Like I was just talking to one of our athletic trainers with the Texas Legends, the team I was just on, and he had never played in sports. You know, he has a PT practice. He worked for a PT. He didn't want like the physical therapy and everything that he was doing without sports. So he literally posted a video of him working and everything that he did on LinkedIn. And that got him a sports position. Long story short, somebody said, oh, we don't video record here. We don't. And he kind of was discouraged. And I was just like, no, because it doesn't make sense to not be yourself when you get the position. 
And the thing that got you the position was recording, be yourself. And how are you just going to promote and not be yourself? That doesn't make any sense. Long story short, our mind bullies, that negative voice has you wanting to be a shell of yourself when you get into these rooms. When I got into that room, into that group of four people that are great, like, yes, I got here. And then it has, oh, wait, let me, let me take a back seat. Let me take a back seat and not say anything because I'm just, you know, a player. What do I know? I don't know about the business side. I don't know about coaches on the money side and everything. I don't know. Let me take a back seat. <laughs> Hell no. And if my mom really gave me that for a second, <laughs> my voice, the traits that I have came back in the next second. It's like, no, uh, like, no, I'm ready. I'm prepared for this moment. And God gave me this moment. I'm going to shine this moment. And so those thoughts came and I just kind of pushed forward and going into our first Zoom meeting with our group. It's funny. This is crazy. Actually, our past head coach, one of the guys that I still love, you might not love, um, coach of Ole Miss now, <laughs> fill in the blanks, whatever. And he just called me to just encourage me because he heard that I got the position. Um, he was like, wow, that's really cool. Like you're in a room of really powerful people listen more than you talk, those type of things. And that was it. And it was funny because I did take the listen more than you talk to heart. I thought, um, because I know the sentiment, obviously you want to learn, learn, learn. I never want to be in a room <laughs> where I'm the smartest guy. God forbid, God forbid. Cause that's boring to me. You're not growing to me and life is about growing. I'm very curious as it is. Um, I don't like to think that I have all the answers because <laughs> look at me. I don't. I'm stuttering. I'm spitting. I'm not even sure I'm looking at the screen like I don't have the answer. Anyways, um, so I was like, he did tell me that coach that I do love. Sorry if you don't like it. He told me, listen more than you speak. And I thought about it. And literally five minutes later, I had the Zoom, the first Zoom meeting with the group. And I did the opposite. I talked more than I listened. And it's funny that I say that because me talking more than I listen was exactly what I was supposed to do. And the feedback and just how the group kind of gelled and, you know, meshed in our. Ah, it was just a beautiful experience because I shared that thing again, that negative voice wants you to not say anything. Listen. Yeah. You would think, oh, he should just be there to listen more than he talked. No. I'm supposed to talk, share this passion, this fire, and let's come up with a strategy to pick our next leader that leads us to the promised land. Like, that's what we want to do. Everybody brings their point. Everybody should be talking, then listening. And talk. Like, so, and that's kind of how it was. Everybody brought a beautiful perspective to the table that got us on a track of, okay, our non-negotiables and our next head coach. Okay, what do we want this guy to have? The traits, the vision. Okay, how does he deal with the community? Okay, the staff. How is he going to do that? And, you know, we came up with a plan to just really dive into the allotment of candidates that we have, look at their background, look at their stories, look at their track record, figure out, talk to any player, any person on the low, because again, this couldn't get out. It was so funny that, you know, things would get out on Twitter. Oh, this guy is in the running to be coach of Texas Tech. And I'm just like, that's not true. because <laughs> That's literally not true. It's so crazy how stuff like that, like, on Twitter, you see all these things like, oh, this guy posts this or this guy posts this. Sources say, who the hell are y'all sources? Who the hell are you? That's why when Texas Tech um, posted, sources say, and literally Coach McCaslin literally was himself saying it. That, that was hilarious because it's like, bro, through this process, so many sources said everything like shut up. Anyways, when you're behind the scenes and you see things, it's. It's crazy. I didn't know they were going to announce the decision, you know, that I was on the committee. I didn't know it was going to be public for some reason. When Kirby called me, our AD, Kirby called me and we were, we actually had a game, Texas Legends, and I was sitting there in kind of the lobby area where we sit before we run out. And I got a phone call and he was just like, can we talk? And he was like, I was like, is it urgent? I said, he was like, yeah. And I was like, Let's do it. And basically, he asked me to be on the committee. Long story short, I'm on the committee. But when that came, I told him and I told my team, I told my coach respectfully, this is the number one priority on my list. I don't give it 
a damn about this team. It sounds crazy, but I give a damn about Texas Tech and Texas Tech basketball. This leader, we got to get this right. Long story short, let me go back to my point because I'm all over the place. In my ADD, I'm Norris. Anyways, this is how it comes. That kind of core group set stone things that we needed in our next head coach. And when we go down the list and we talk about different candidates in our group, because again, we couldn't message, we couldn't call on the phone because it's so weird. People will get information from anywhere. So we literally had this different app that was secure. Our messages disappeared. I felt like I was in the CIA or something. It was crazy. Um, so anything that we saw on a coach, ooh, boom, 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 put it in the group chat. Ooh, boom, boom, boom. This player said this, put it in the group chat. Oh, did you hear about this coach and this? Uh, I don't think. Mm-mm. And we were all like on it, on it, on it. Everybody was so responsive. Everybody gave impact, impact feedback and just input on everything. It wasn't just, what do y'all think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was like, I like this guy. Well, I don't like this guy. And here's why I don't like this guy. It was so great to be in a room where, you know, each and every individual wants more. Each and every individual challenge, challenges the other one to do better with what they got. Um, and to come up with a great product for our university. So that part was great. And, you know, a lot of people want to know about the names and did we go for this name? Did we go for this name? I would say on this front, I'm not going to, you know, say names on here because I don't think it brings value to what we do, but I do. And I will say this, the moment I did meet GMAC and I talked to him, I mean, it was unlike anything or any. (laughs) <laughs> coach that I talked to during this process, he was really electric, passionate, and he had a vision. And his vision from day one was exactly what I wanted to hear. Championship, championship, championship. How are you going to do it? What's it going to look like with the community? What's discipline look like? Again, everybody says discipline, work hard, character, but in the confines of what we actually do every single day, what does discipline look like to you? Is it touch the line? Is it go to every class, sit in the front row? Is it hold my brother accountable to not, you know, if he has weight goals to, you know, make his weight, like what does discipline actually look like concrete, like in detail and the attention to detail that he brought for his goals and the attention to detail that he brought for, you know, building out his staff and the attention to detail that he brought to his vision and how he was going to make that happen at Texas Tech. And just the the way that he showed it, there's one thing when you say all these things, but he showed it. And I'm like, I don't want to play on my feelings right now, but I love this guy. (laughs) Like the way he's showing it. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. It's not like we can win with this guy. We will win with this guy. The vision that he has and everything that he's going to build to tech. He understands the community is (laughs) unlike anything else. Our fans are our advantage, literally our six man on the court. So just knowing that a guy had that, that fire for not only the game of basketball, but for young men, that was another huge piece. Cause another thing in college basketball now with the money and the NIL things, it's like, all right, I'm going to get the best players, pump them out next, pump them out. But it's like, nobody's actually growing. Nobody's actually building. Nobody's actually becoming a man because they just know, Oh, if I don't like it here, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And I have my thoughts on that as well. I don't like it anyways, but that's how it is. And if it's how it is, we going to win in how it is. And I think like another thing with that is it's weird. And with Texas Tech, we don't want this. But with that, nobody ever knows how to fail because how do you learn to go through something, grind with brothers and just dip? All right. Uh, NIL deal wasn't enough. We didn't win. I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to go to this school. Nobody's actually learning the traits that, you know, constitutes winning and long lasting winning and excellence, which is failing. And why did I fail? What did it feel like? What did it look like? What did I do wrong? How do I do this right? They just not, damn, she had the coach wasn't right for me. He did. I'm a dip. Oh, the school wasn't right for me. I'm a dip. Like, bro, nobody actually knows how to, oh, push through pain, push through an injury, push through pressure. Nobody gets that anymore. I can go on a rant about that. But. When we talked about these things openly with GMAC and he kind of understand that he was sitting there like, okay, like it's not only that I agree with you, but I feel this way and this way and this way about the same things. I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> my vote is uh GMAC Texas tech head coach. And, and so it's just beautiful how it ended up working out. I think 
I know that we got the right guy and, you know, our vision is trending up. This is another thing that I hate to not say. Literally, I was in there and I'm saying every time I'm introduced, oh, this is Nor So the I say final four, all this. I'm like, I'm thank you. That's true. National championship runner up, whatever. But like, I want us to that should just be. The starting point, it's not the, yeah, celebrate this guy and yeah, celebrate this team. Yeah, the team should be honored. Yes, don't get me wrong. Nobody should ever forget that team. Nobody's going to forget the team, but what's next? A stepping stone, a step, 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 raise the bar. It's not just, we did that and then just let's coast. No, like the bar has been set. We're not going to lower standards for anything, for any coach, for anybody. And he knew that. And it's not that he knew that he embodied that. That's why I was like, this is the guy. He, uh, I don't know. So I'm extremely excited. I don't know how long this episode is. And I'll talk about this more at length. But I did want to do an episode on just how I felt about the opportunity to be in a room of guys that want to do more for not only their school, but the city and for young men to build something out of them. I think that's beautiful. I think that's life. We're all here to serve others. And the way that we do it is through our discipline within ourselves to, okay, that doesn't look like Texas Tech. That looks like Texas Tech. And this is why. Let me ask this guy that looks like Texas Tech, because it might be a facade. Let me ask him, like, does he discipline himself and his players and his community and his family like Texas Tech would? Is he built with the same things that we are, the toughness, the grit, the togetherness, the family? It, does, does that mean something to him? And yes, yes, yes. If it checks the mark, obviously you're the head coach of Texas Tech. I don't know. It's just a lot with this um, experience. I think it was eye opening on so many fronts, whether it's it, you know, the one thing I did say to some of my friends about this is it just makes me realize that I, after sometimes like I would talk and I would speak and, and it's weird. I haven't even talked in a way on this episode in a way that it makes sense because it's like, ugh, all at once, I'll probably do a episode where I like piece together actually what happened. Um, but this is just for me, just getting it out. But yeah, like a lot of the times I'll lead the conversation. That's one of the things I think I know God was equipping me this for this moment through this podcast to lead the conversations, to ask the real questions, to know what to ask, to know when to ask, to know how to di- dig in and rebuttal. And literally I would sit right by the candidate and ask them and ask them and ask them and ask them. I'm like, damn. And I'm looking around the room and they're like, They leaning in like, damn, that's a good question. I'm just like, who the hell am I? Like, bro, I'm just Norris. But in my head, I'm like, I'm ready for this moment. Literally, when we're interviewing all these candidates on on specific day, everybody else has a bunch of notes, um, something to write with. And I don't have anything. And at first I'm like, oh, shoot, I did not bring anything. What the hell? Like, how do you not bring anything to this? Are you how do you not have questions and things? But then I was like but I'm prepared and I feel good and I'm at peace and I'm ready. And then I did an interview and I was like, Whoa, that was, that was not me. It was God. And then I'm looking at it. I'm just like, bro, through this whole experience, through this whole time, it's been God to the point where I'm with the Texas legends after some of the interviews. Now I'm back with the team actually after I flew back and I'm on the plane and I'm thinking about everything. I'm like, Whoa, because I truly know and I truly believe this coaching, this committee coaching, whatever, this thing, this picking a head coach, this opportunity to be on the committee changed my life. 100% changed my life. And, you know, for that to realize itself in actual things and, you know, that will, in whatever way God wants to do that, he'll do that. But like, I know it changed my life. I felt it everything. So I was on the plane. I was just sitting there and I was in tears. I'm like, damn, like, because God had been building me for this moment. You know, I say this because of this podcast through the days where you think, ah, why am I even learning to do things? Uh, (laughs) Somebody trying to stop me from getting this message out. It ain't going to happen in the days where I'm like, why am I even trying to look at how to interview this and look at that and read this book on leadership and read this book on discipline and why am I even doing that in different interview styles? Because I don't see an end. I don't see an end goal for this. Yes, a podcast, but it's like, I could just talk 
why am I really studying how to do this? What is this for in those days? And that's months, hell, year before this. Why am I doing this? And then this opportunity came. It's no coincidence. I don't believe in no damn coincidence because when it came, I was ready to jump and move and run and be able to interview. And like I was equipped because everything that has came before me and what I was building then, that's so true for a lot of our lives. If you're listening, if you're watching, there's something that you want to do. There's something that you want to grow into. Or if you don't know what you want to grow into, but you know, uh, I do feel like reading that book on this. I don't know what will come out of it, but if I try it, if I jump into it, you know, I might learn something, do it. Because again, as you piece together these things, life is about the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and actually seeing yourself in that thing. It's not about, oh, I just wait till things fall to me. No, it's about being aggressive and going after the things that you want. And if you can't get there, it's to learn about the things that you want. Educate yourself before entertaining yourself with everything. Educate. Oh, I think that's cool. Let me learn more about that. Let me learn, 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 learn. And I was on this learning journey the whole last look. shit now. But for specifically interviewing all these things that I spoke on right now, I've been on this learning journey for like a year and a half. And for me to jump and run with this opportunity that I didn't know that was coming literally was God. And so I was in tears just thinking like, damn, like, bro, this is crazy. This is actually crazy. This is actually crazy because it hit me like it. It was not me. It wasn't because I'm (laughs) handsome. (laughs) It wasn't because everybody loves me. (laughs) It's because God placed me there for a reason. And it's now your time for God to be, you know, put in me his spirit. (laughs) For me to use and craft, to use my voice, my spirit, everything to touch others and serve others. I'm I'm thankful. Again, this episode, (laughs) random ranting. I literally was on bed rest yesterday, but I just feel the need to come out with this episode now because it's life. It's real. And if you're in a real battle, you versus your mind bully, where you might have been sick and now you're healed and now you're whole and now you're better. If they're like, ah. Just wait until you're all the way you just wait until you're written and you feel yourself and you're on your right routine. That's not life because life throws you off track like it literally has thrown me off track. But I'm going to still come up tomorrow, (laughs) the next day, the next day. It's not. uh, Are you ready? The stage is ready. It's like, uh, no, I'm not ready, but it's time (laughs) and it's time. And if you listen this time and any other time, I'm so grateful. I definitely will come out with, you know a different way to articulate uh, the committee that was on the search committee. Cause it was awesome. Great. But for this random room, room, room kind of podcast all at once, I, I wanted to speak on my personal kind of take on the search committee. Again, if you like my Billy podcast, do me a favor, rate, subscribe, review. It means a lot. Genix, you going off? What?